yes, my name is Keith Kemp, and uh, I farm in West Manchester, Ohio, which is around the Purple County, Dark County area. And we run uh, 1,700 acres of no-till farming that we've been continuous no-till uh, around 30, pressing 30 years, a little beyond now. And so it's been pretty exciting. We do corn, soybeans, and wheat. Uh, we do a little, maybe two-thirds corn, a third uh, soybeans, and like I say, about 40 acres of wheat very small. Then our wheat, we do uh, double crop soybeans and as a cover crop and everything in our, our wheat production. So our farm, like I say, we basically enjoy managing a no-till operation. It's been very exciting times for us. And with our no-till work, I guess what really fascinates me is being able to manage our soils, bring them back to life. Uh, you know, some of the First things we love to do, we buy a farm, first thing we'll do is go in and tile this farm. Uh, we run our laterals every 45 feet, and uh, you know that just brings our soil to life. It puts more air in our soil. It really works extremely well you know, in the wet years by draining, but on the dry years, it's amazing the benefit you'll see because it just lets the ground open up with the air, and then your root systems will get down to that tile and almost pull some moisture out, which is really fascinating and everything. So, so that's one of the first things. And uh, then our farm, you know, we're trying to use the latest technologies that we can uh, can work with. We're all auto steer now. Uh, you know, it's really been enjoyable to get onto the auto steer. And uh, we're running SF2. Uh, we're hoping to go to the uh, to RTK when we get a tire up. But the SF2 worked real well for us this year. And, you know, it's just fascinating not having overlaps and, you know, have our, uh, you know, we're using less seed, less chemicals. It's saving us money. You know, I really project we'll pay for it easily in two years. With, and then these are the operators. It's amazing in the day that uh, you're just not near as fatigued doing that. And, and then, you know, it's really exciting times in all of our biotech work with all of our technology with seeds. Uh, you know, we've got everything at our hands now. It's just whatever technology you want, you manage. You know, if you got a field that's got rootworm, you got. If you don't, you don't have to use that. You know, it, we got all kinds of options out here in agriculture. So it, it really makes, like, say, it's fun to manage now. And uh, in our farm, we like to do a lot of plot work. Uh, the soybeans here we're looking at is some plots that I. I'm, my goal is we've been the last two years. Uh, I want to raise 300 bushel corn, 100 bushel soybeans. So we set some plots aside and trying to manage those a little more intensely, and not really putting more, you know, fertilize and more expense into it, but to try to manage them a little better, you know, with the insects to fungicides, and uh, to really go toward raising this 300 bushel corn, 100 bushel beans. Because, yeah, I'm just hoping that can be the norm our operation in five years that we're doing that. And I think we got the technology to be able to do that. And, and no-till is going to play a big part in that because, you know, we got a live soil out here that's just really working with high organic matters, high water holding capacity. And, you know, we got all our microorganisms, we got our earthworms. So it's just, I think everything's working in the right direction. Well, some of the things that uh, we're into now with our consumer public out here, you know, they are really confused of what we're doing out here on the farms. And I do a lot of, spend a lot of time going to civic organization stuff, tell them about my farm. And if, if us farmers would do that, boy, it, it would really open a new world for agriculture. And, uh, you know, we do have the Farmers and Rancher Alliance coming on board that's going to do a great job with that. But, you know, the consumer is so confused right now from organics to biotech to just everything. You know, they think we're out here putting too much fertilizer on, we're putting too much pesticide, insecticides. And, you know, with all of our new technologies, we're using less than we ever had in agriculture. And when the consumer hears that, they're just fascinated. You know, they're fascinated to hear about the auto steer. They're fascinated to hear that, you know, when we apply fertilize, it's all on a two and a half acre grid sample. It's all variable rate. If we need fertilize, it's on. If we don't, it isn't. And uh, we go through the field with our combines. You know, it tells you how many bushels it's making automatically, the moisture. You know, with our planters, it's giving us, uh, showing us almost this x-ray seed in the ground, you know, because it tells you at every drop, everything you're doing. And uh, so when we tell a consumer all that, then our international trade now, you know, they're demanding that our grains will be sustainable. And, you know, sustainable, everybody's got a different definition for it. And in Europe, you know, they've, they've got all kinds of different things in sustainability. But again, 
we're into world markets now, and if we want to keep you know our farms profitable, we got to listen to these you know consumers even abroad now, and so we're doing a lot of work in the sustainability area, and you know working to educate people. And you know the American farmer is more sustainable than in the world, and that's what's exciting. And uh, and no-till you know fits right into it because you know we're holding more CO2 gases. You know we're not using near the the diesel fuel, so our greenhouse effect is you know a lot better. So it's a matter again of educating, telling everybody what we're doing out here. And when you're doing things right, from you know waterways to buffer strips to control your water qualities, and you know right now there's a huge issue on this phosphorus thing, and if we farmers don't take control of that, you know we're going to get such uh, you know new laws that's going to be hard for us to farm. So you know that's where a farmer's going to have to really step up the plate now and be sustainable in what he's doing out here.